Throughout all contexts, the term red flag signifies a reason to stop. Red lights signal us to stop our cars on the road, and red tape cautions us from going beyond a certain point. As we experience life, we develop a sixth sense. It helps you trust your gut. And also, you know, learn how to pay close attention to our surroundings, particularly to small details. The more attention you pay to your surroundings, the more aware you become of slight changes and variations, and the more attuned you become with the world and people around you. Like the red flags we're going to talk about today and how to spot them early in the relationship. But first, My name is Sharifa Namsisi. I'm a marriage counselor and life coach. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your love and support. Today I have a special announcement. Earlier this week, I got a job title. I was appointed PR manager of Educate and Orphan Uganda, a registered non-profit organization determined to educate and keep less privileged and vulnerable orphans in school. And you know, as Educate and Orphan members, we try to fill the gap left by the deceased parent in whatever capacity we can. We go for visitation days, we pay school fees, buy scholastic materials and etc. etc. And do you know how we do this? Funny story actually. Every member contributes a minimum of five thousand shillings. Five K in Kumitano a month. Of course I was all contributing a mitwala turn, not a two gana, but we start from as little as five K. A bag of Sasulamu dollars, if that's about one point five dollars. And with this, we are able to keep the 50 orphaned children we have in school at the moment. As PR officer, yeah, I'm responsible for creating awareness, developing and implementing the organization's PR and media relations campaigns. And I'm here to also build its reputation, enhance a favorable image for the organization, for the potential donors and the public. So you'll be seeing and hearing more about this. Please eh? just bear with me. And I'll leave more details about this at the end of the video. What does a red flag mean in a relationship? In relationships, a red flag is essentially a sign that goes off when something is not right, intuitively telling you to steer clear. Signs that the person probably cannot have a healthy relationship and proceeding down the road together would be emotionally and physically dangerous. Red flags give you a funny feeling that something isn't quite right kind of like putting a mental pin in a behavior you want to keep an eye on. Sometimes these red flags can be less extreme, less obvious, and might present more as a clue or a hint that there is an underlying problem. But other times, they are crystal clear, like a sign to run for the hills. In most cases, the partner seems fine at first, you know? They be rough on the edges, but their good outweighs the bad. And then boom! their true selves begin to show <laughs> and they become plain inseparable inseparable at our biggest mistake when dating someone new is we look at the person through rose colored glasses we miss the glaring signs that they're not right for us and while we can't always see the real face of our partners until a long time has passed there could be subtle red flags early in the relationship that might indicate they are not relationship material by now i'm sure we've all seen these glaring signs before but whether we ignore them, try to work with them, or walk away is entirely up to us. Today, I am here to tell you which red flags you definitely want to watch out for, plus what we can do about them. Red flag number one, violent displays. Someone who demonstrates violence towards you, your loved ones, or strangers is a serious red flag. It indicates they have not yet developed a healthy way to properly channel their emotions. Made, a Netflix series, is a must watch. In my opinion, it has a very accurate and realistic portrayal of how we downplay red flags and how devastating emotional abuse can be without a hand ever being laid. The truth is, the most damaging abuse can take place before any physical blows land. In some relationships, in fact, no physical blows will ever land, but the toxic environment of violence, fear, control does its own devastating damage. The line from that series that stuck with me the most was, before they bite, they bark. Before they hit you, they hit near you. To vump into your quick or soringa. He just punched through the wall. Don't ignore red flags. They don't go away. 
Instead, they grow bigger to a point where it gets so hard to handle them. If your partner is sending you red flags, however small, believe them. And then take a step back, figure out what you need and want in order to move forward into a happier tomorrow. Red flag number two, unwillingness to talk through issues. When you have a disagreement with your partner, does the she or he walk away? Do they block you, shut down, point fingers and place all the blame on you? Do they throw a tantrum? Hmm, these are all red flags. I would say the major red flag in a person's behavior that may indicate the relationship won't work is the unwillingness to talk through issues, big or small. All couples have disagreements. That's perfectly normal and healthy, by the way. But it's how you handle those disagreements that can really make or break things. In a good relationship, a couple talks through issues, listens to the other person's point of view, expresses his or her own, and no one needs to win or lose. It's about expressing how something makes you feel and being heard. Communication is key. Red flag number three. Do they try to change the way you wear your hair, your clothes, or anything else about you that feels like you and it's making you uncomfortable? Red flag. You say you don't want to go further sexually or consent to physical intimacy and they insist. Red flag. You say you're not available on Sunday, but they push to see them. You're not ready to have them meet your family and friends, but they push it. Another red flag. The list of examples is endless. Point I'm trying to make is be aware of anyone who attempts to cross or push your physical boundaries in innocent ways. Another red flag is you always justifying their bad behavior. If you find yourself justifying away what he or she does, even though these feel wrong in your gut, then there is a surefire red flag. When they do something bad or say something that's off or rude, you may think, mm, he's only that way because he went through X. But maybe she's rude because she's PMSing and had a long day. Now, this is ticking the boxes of, is he or she rude to the waiter but nice to their family members and says things like, hey, it's going to cause it so that next time they treat us better. Or he has a mean mouth towards some people and not others. I mean, this should raise your eyebrows. You know, if you find yourself just find their meanness, then it's time to pause, take a step back. Our brains work over time to convince us that somebody is not good for us. I mean, even our guts know it. Number five, do they constantly deny, criticize, or dismiss you? Red flag. You may be in a relationship with an emotional manipulator if you see an emotional double standard in the relationship, experience your feelings being denied, criticized, or dismissed. If you find yourself giving in to the peace and see your self-esteem diminishing, you may get a feeling that there is something not right, like, I mean, there are secrets, unexplained behaviors, unexpected reactions, or are increasingly criticized blamed, put down, or discounted, often done jokingly at first, by the way, and you feel confused by explanation given about, you know, hurtful behaviors, you may want to check that. Red flag number six, are they overly critical about their ex-partners? Hmm. Why did you break up with Shakira? Ah, man, wait. You're Oh, what about Mariam? I told you, I'm going to be a good guy. She used to beat me up. Oh, okay. So, why did you break up with Juma? But I Juma was toxic. I told I'm very unlucky. Actually, all my exes are trouble. They were trouble. Pure narcissists. <laughs> Come on. For you, all your exes are bad. Eh? In any way, you're perfect. Eh? You're not flawed. Anyway, me, I find that people are very predictable. When whatever they have done in previous relationships, they are likely to do it again. Listen, if you listen carefully to how your new lover describes his or her previous relationships and how he or she speaks about their exes, you can learn a lot about how this person is likely to treat you. When people describe all their exes as terrible people and put all the blame on them for the relationship's failure, this is a red flag for me. It practically shouts, I cannot take any responsibility for whatever went wrong. I have not learned anything from these relationships. It is totally up to you to make our relationship work. It is also likely to mean that they are unable to see people in an integrated and realistic way. When they started dating these other people, 
they probably saw them as highly desirable and all good yeah but now that these relationships are over these same people are all bad either they have a knack for picking absolutely worst people <laughs> with whom to be in relationships with or they are seeing all these people in a very distorted way i mean if they could not see anyone before you realistically or make any of these relationships work they are unlikely to be able to do it with you red flag number seven massive sense of entitlement when you see that somebody feels entitled to you doing more for them than what is equal in a relationship that's a huge red flag that they are somebody who use others it actually just was a real clear lack of care when we ask somebody for help because we are tired or we are overwhelmed or our plate is full and the person says yeah i'll get to that or actually never does or the person says yeah well i can't right now when they're actually not busy at all i see this a lot in marriages and dating relationships where there is always one person who is feeding the needs of the other person one person is always giving 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 and the other person just gives one back or just keeps receiving and receiving there is an imbalance and the other selfish person is typically fine with their needs being met if you use somebody you don't care about them or their well-being or their overall happiness in life it's a habitual pattern it's almost like life is there to meet their needs and people are just commodities to get things done for them and to add on that when you notice that in everyday life events conversation and basic interactions are frequently about that person where there is constant manipulation and abuse of power over you do i even have to say it red flag for instance you could not you could confront the person you're dating about something they did or said that hurt you rather than listening to your constant or apologizing they will manipulate and flip the conversation telling you all the things you've done to hurt and upset them this scenario shows signs of narcissism and things only get worse the more you spend time together. They don't care about you and your concerns. They only care about themselves. I mean, narcissists are void of empathy. They don't believe they are wrong about anything and they will constantly feel victimized, accusing you of attacking them when you're just expressing your feelings in a situation. Over time, you will start to feel alone, constantly guilty, and you'll even doubt your own sense of self-confidence and self-worth. This is definitely a reason to distance yourself from such people. Another red flag to look out for is active addiction. Watch out for reliance on drugs to get through the day, the week, or through tough spots because I mean that that's quite concerning. Yeah, if alcohol or drugs are impacting your partner's life in a negative way, be it their work or relationships, that's a sign of addiction. Similarly, if your partner relies on substances to get through tough situations, then that's indicative of addiction and signifies they haven't yet figured out how to cope without altering their mental state. When it comes to someone who is suffering from addiction, if you're pursuing them romantically, you want to know they're in some kind of long-term recovery and they're getting long-term support. Something to watch out for. Red flag number nine, possessiveness. Now, possessiveness ranges on a spectrum from normal to unhealthy. A little jealousy now and then isn't, you know, the end of the world. But if their possessiveness towards you is connected with anger, hostility, narcissism, threats, or rage, that's a red flag, especially if it gets worse over time. A partner that attempts to control you or isolate you from your friends family is definitely not okay watch out for all forms of manipulation red flag number 10 sustained difficulties in your sexual relationship and to make it worse you're not even talking about it at all or if you are it's just in passing as a joke and not getting the actual attention it deserves there will always be flaws with sexual connection you know but if you can't talk about it and it becomes chronic it can really harm the relationship I'm sure you've heard of sexless marriages. Eh? This is how they start. Red flag number 11, you're witnessing toxic behavior. Okay, lately the word toxic has been used a lot. Sometimes we don't quite understand what it means. 
lately it's it's almost normal to label everyone okay even the simplest thing as toxic but if your partner is exhibiting true toxic behavior such as manipulating gaslighting dishonesty chronic lying it will end up draining the hell out of you feeling fear towards or because of the partner is another red flag that indicates toxicity in a relationship if you ever feel afraid to discuss issues with your partner fear for your safety in their presence or are worried that they will accuse you of something do not ignore that red flag number 12 So one of the ways partners bond and become close with each other is to share personal information, often confidential, with each other, right? So if you're not doing that, well, red flag. It's not a good sign if you find out that your partner isn't running to fill you in on what's going on with with his or her life. I know it might not seem like a big deal if you don't immediately think to tell your partner when your boss gives you a raise or when you have good news or even gossip. But if you notice that tendency to confide in other people first and maybe even skip your partner altogether becomes a pattern, it could be a warning sign that you guys are not buddies, you're not friends with your partner, or you don't feel supported in a relationship. Red flag number 13 is when you've been together for a while but your partner doesn't want to introduce you to their inner circles. Go be kasera ba kukweka. While no one expects you to be introduced on the second date, it's alarming when you find that your partner is preventing run-ins between his family, close friends, and you. I mean, that's a problem. Bottom line: if you think you're encountering a relationship red flag, address it asap, nip it in the bud. Or if you identify it as a deal breaker, express your worries. And if there is no work done to improve on them, the best thing you can do is get out. Let me know in the comment section which other red flags I've missed out and for personalized information or assistance please reach me on Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh